All right. Hello, friend. I would say welcome to another episode of Songwriter Theory, but that is not true because this is our first YouTube live stream, which I am pretty excited about. And I decided, of course, to do this six steps from idea to lyrics you can be proud of because I asked, and this was the overwhelming choice. Everybody seemed to agree, yes, please go over this via live stream. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're doing. Um, and I mentioned this before, but if you are watching maybe years down the line or you are not currently a subscriber, I just want to let you know that there is this free guide, six-step lyric writing checklist in link in the description that you can go pick up. It's largely about the same thing we're talking about today. Um, but the idea that I went with sort of with this live stream is that I want them to complement each other. So I don't want it to be too repetitive. I want it to sort of look look at the same thing from, from two angles so that in theory you get the most from both watching this live stream and by uh, checking out the guide. The guide, of course, is going to go a little more into detail on some areas, and then I'm going to go into detail on areas that I think could be confusing or um, or just give some different examples. So, link in the description. Go download it totally free if you haven't already. Hopefully, you've already read it if you are with us right now um, because that will be helpful. All right. First step capture the concept so the goal of this step overall just from a big picture view is to never be without a list of song ideas so at the heart this is to sort of prevent that hey I'm gonna I'm gonna song write today so you open maybe a notebook or if you're like me a Google Doc and you stare at a blank page and think okay write a song or start a song but you don't even know where you are right like you don't you don't even have any idea what song concept you're gonna talk about right like am I writing a love song am I writing uh, a song about how much the work day today was great or maybe it was horrible like like what am I even talking about in this song I have no idea I'm just staring at a blank page right and that is something that that is not productive and a lot of times when we're putting a lot of pressure on like writing a lyric, it's overwhelming to even come up with an idea, even though ideas aren't that hard to come up with, right? That's like, this is the easiest part of writing a song is capturing the concept, right? Ideas are cheap, which I'm about to go over, but so this is an active process, not a passive one. The idea of this is I am not saying that you never go look for ideas. That's not what this is, okay? This is an active process. So when you're watching a TV show, you're actively looking for song ideas. Throughout the day, you're actively thinking of song ideas. Some days, say you're going to songwrite for an hour. Some days, the best way to use that hour might be to just sit looking at the sheet that you have that has this ca all these captured concepts, and you actually actively just come up with ideas you're not putting any pressure on writing lyrics you're not putting any pressure on anything except like ideas throwing ideas out right so that's an active process you're actively trying to do something you're not just you know when when inspiration strikes then you open the document and write something down to be clear when inspiration strikes yes you also should do that right because if you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and you have a song idea, go get your phone and, and, and write down your idea or wherever you write ideas. The idea is always write down your ideas, even if the muse just delivers them to you. So also have it be a passive process, but, but, but you want it to be an active process as well. I don't want you to just wait for the muse to hand deliver ideas because the reality is if you just wait for the muse, you're just not going to come up with as many ideas. And... Of course, you need to write it down. This seems obvious, but so many people, myself included at times, will think, oh, I, I'll remember that. But you might not, especially if this is late at night, 
it's so easy to come up with a good idea and be like, oh, but I'm so tired. I'll write it down in the morning. No. Write it down now. And then here's the other big idea here. Ideas are cheap. What do I mean by that? I mean, I think everybody thinks that coming up with an idea is like a huge win. Right? You probably have that friend, or you might even be that person, that in your life you've probably thought of 10 to 50 business ideas that you're confident are billion dollar ideas or million dollar ideas, and whoever actually implements this thing is going to be a gazillionaire. Right? Like, man, if somebody just did this idea that I have in my brain, they'd be the next Jeff Bezos, right? And then what happens? Nobody implements that idea, or you don't implement that idea, and nothing happens. You just think, wow, how brilliant that was. Ideas are cheap, right? It's easy to have an idea. I can come up with 20 ideas for songs, for businesses, for anything in the next 20 minutes, easily. Maybe even in the next 20 seconds, right? So you shouldn't have a similar number of ideas as you have songs you're working on right because ideas are cheap i want you to aim more for having a hundred ideas per song right because now you have a hundred ideas to work with and you're only picking the best ideas to actually develop a song off of and if you're not actively capturing these concepts and capturing these ideas you're not going to have that right you're just going to have five song ideas and you're currently writing those five song ideas even if four of them are garbage which is a waste of time and um, I haven't really talked about this, but there's sort of two songwriter schools of thought. One is like write a billion songs, obviously hyperbole, but like write a hundred songs for a 12 song album, right? And most of those songs are garbage. And then half the album songs are even garbage. And then the other school of thought, which is more my school of thought, is like don't waste time writing songs that you already know are garbage, right? Because a lot of songs are going to be garbage right from the outset, right? The idea is is garbage, right? Like the idea is too simple or the idea is just not compelling or the idea has been done a billion times before. So ideas are cheap. Come up with a ton of them. So here's an example. There's a little uh, snippet of my ideas document. So I just, I just have this in Google Drive. I, I call it ideas. It's uh, pretty simple, but this is just a little part of it. And I'm, I, I put it on here to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Like, these are not fleshed out ideas at all. So take the top one, stepping on butterflies. For some reason, I was just thinking, okay, what is an interesting image for wanting to go back in time and then sort of change how things turned out? And, you know, there's the famous butterfly effect, right? And then the, the short story, um, I forget what it's called now. Is it called the butterfly effect? No, the the biggest hunt or something about that. I don't know. It's some short story where people go back in time and you have to stay on this platform when you go back in time. It's like a hovering platform, I think. And you get to hunt a T-Rex. But somebody, I forget how it happens, but they fall off or they get off the platform for some reason and they just kill a single butterfly. But because it's so far back in time, it actually had huge effects. So it basically made it so, I forget exactly what it was, but it's something like Nazi Germany won the war instead of, instead of, you know, the Allies winning the war. So the world was in a horrible, horrible state. Um, just because of this one butterfly being killed. So and that's sort of the butterfly effect, right? So I thought, oh, stepping on butterflies, that's that's kind of interesting, right? Or just another memory. So that comes from actually a YouTube comment. I think I was reading through some comments, which is usually a bad idea, but I was reading through some comments on a song um, that you know some art other artist did, and one of the top comments, one of the first comments was somebody saying that exact quote I put there. Like you can even tell I copy and pasted it in there because the, the formatting is a little different. But the hardest part about life is when someone you gave many memories becomes a memory. Actually, that's not even quite proper English, but it still struck me, right? Like I thought, oh, that's a very interesting concept, right? Like so many of your memories are created with this person. They're, they're, they're somebody you're creating memories with and then they just become another one of those memories like again it's just a simple twist on something that's been said before which is usually where the best ideas are right there's nothing new under the sun at the end of the day there's like love songs there's 
I hate my life songs. I'm happy today songs. Um, you know, it, you know, there's, there's only so many songs, right? The reality is nobody's very interested. I shouldn't say nobody. Very few people are interested in a song about like some fictional universe where, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like as much as people love Tolkien, like I, I really don't think you want a Lord of the Rings song, right? Cause there's no, what do we relate to? I, I can't relate to orcs, right? Um, okay, view from halfway down, right? So if you've seen BoJack Horseman, the TV, the uh, Netflix show, which I've mentioned a couple of times, but I feel the need to mention again, it is inappropriate, uh, but it is also absolutely brilliant and a great uh, look into depression and so- some other things. It just does a great job. So the penultimate as- episode, without spoiling anything, um, is exactly what I write there, right? Like there's a character that recites this poem called the view from halfway down. And it's them talking about what they were thinking as they were halfway down after they jumped off a bridge. Right. So it's this idea of, you know, they've already killed themselves in the sense of like, it's too late. You can't change your mind. What thoughts are going through their mind, right? Like now, now they're like, Oh no, I want to be back at the top of the bridge. I thought that was very compelling. So, um, and then on the other side, if you look a little farther below, I have this rise. This is just a music idea. I thought of this idea of like a song where the whole song keeps adding higher and higher parts, slowly crawling up and up and up. So like at first it would start with like just a bass line and then it would add a, another layer that's like an octave above that. And then it, it would keep going and the song would be around this concept of rise. So, and then last one I'll go over or two, two last ones. Lullaby type song using symbols to tell your young son a story. The story of how a man didn't appreciate what he had and lost his love because of a selfish mistake based on parenthood story arc. So parenthood is a TV show. Um, and there was a certain story arc that I found really compelling. So I just wrote that down. Right. And then this last one is actually like a lyric idea. I know you're nice, but you're the villain of my story. For some reason I was like, huh, that's interesting. Right. Because if you think about it, we're all sort of villains, in someone's story, we're, like we're, like we're usually the hero of our own story, right? And you probably have villains, right? So if somebody broke up with you, not necessarily, right? There's there's different ones, but somebody might have broken your heart. They weren't very good to you. They cheated on you, maybe. They're the villain in your story, right? Or they're a villain. But you know, they 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 might not see you as a villain, right? Like so, and then there's this idea of like. We're, we're the villain in somebody else's story and, and we might be nice and great, but no matter what, there's somebody that we probably heard along the way where we might be the villain of their story. Even if we didn't do anything evil per se, like villain might be a bit much, maybe antagonist would be a better word. So big picture here. The idea is keep capturing concepts, right? Like you can see, these are not well thought out concepts. They're just stuff like in at the top, I have torrent, right? That's just a word. That's just a word that, like, I'm like, oh, that's a cool word. It's very vibrant. So I might want to use that. Um, So the idea is do not be judgmental. Just write down all your ideas. It's better to have an idea written down that you don't remember what it was about than not written down at all. Right? Step two, brainstorm sheet. So notice we're on step two, and we have yet to start actually writing lyrics. Step three is writing lyrics, but we'll get there. The goal of a brainstorm sheet is to develop your idea before you start writing lyrics. So at this point, you have a brainstorm sheet with, say, 100 song ideas, right? So now you're looking through that that idea sheet, and you think, okay, Let's say I really like the concept of stepping on butterflies or the view from halfway down. So now I create a new sheet, but this sheet is deve- is dedicated to developing a single idea, right? So we're taking our best ideas or maybe just the ideas that we are most inspired by at the moment, right? So in, in, in your idea sheet, if you're doing it right, you're writing ideas all the time. You're writing it when you're watching Parenthood, right? And you're also doing it while you're watching BoJack Horseman, right? 
and you you write song ideas when you're in a good mood and you're happy and you're like wow my wife or husband loves me life is good and then you write it when you're in a dis, you know a, a horrible mood so you have all these different song concepts so that if you're having a good day maybe you're going to lean towards developing an idea that's like a happy love song right like i'm so glad that i married you yay Whereas if you're in a bad mood and your boss yelled at you today and you felt like, hey, I didn't deserve that, then maybe that angsty, angry song concept is going to be the one that you're going to start brainstorming because that's what you're inspired towards. Because I think a big, big picture thing with lyric writing and songwriting in general is learning more and more when to push yourself to continue to write or develop something even though you're not necessarily inspired and then also taking advantage of those brief moments of inspiration so sprinting and writing a lot when you're inspired making sure to take advantage of those moments but also not relying on them so you're trying to develop your idea before you start writing lyrics again similar to the brainstorm sheet don't be a judge here write down any and all thoughts and ideas Anything that comes to mind off of that original concept, even if it ends up evolving into something completely different than it initially was, who cares? Ideas are cheap, right? You can revisit that idea. You can, and, and, and you know, as brilliant of an idea as you think something is, a brilliant idea doesn't make a brilliant product or a br brilliant song, right? Like segues, those, those seemed brilliant, right? But now they're kind of dead. They exist, but they're, you know... They didn't exactly revolutionize transportation the way people thought that it would, the way Steve Jobs even thought it would. So again, write down any and all thoughts and ideas. Don't be judgmental of your own thoughts and ideas. And then capture any related inspiration. So again, this this is, think of it sort of like in step one, you found a place, right? You found your place on Google Maps. Uh, you found a certain bench in a park that you're meant to meet someone or something so you're at a specific place you have an idea but now for this brainstorm sheet you're looking around right you're seeing your surroundings you're like oh i i could go to that pond over there that fountain looks kind of pretty oh look there are geese i should avoid that because geese are obviously evil and the worst creatures on earth besides things like mosquitoes and scorpions and other actively destructive beasts um right so you're sort of surveying the area you haven't committed to walking anywhere yet you're just kind of looking around like oh wh what's around here right what other ideas are around here that's sort of where you are here and in my brainstorm sheet i like to have three sections i don't always use all three but these three help to really keep everything together because this is eventually going to be the sheet that i write lyrics in down below so first section, musical ideas. So for some songs, right, you're, you're always going to write songs in different orders. Sometimes I come up with a piano riff or a guitar chord progression or guitar riff or something, and I have no idea what the song's about. Sometimes I write it when I already had a co song concept in mind, right? So I already know that this lyric idea or maybe this full sheet of lyrics is going to be paired with this musical idea, right? Um, but regardless, that's a place where I will reference where my musical ideas that go with this song are. So a lot of times it will just say the name of the file on my computer that uh, has the recording of the musical side of the song so far. Um, if not, they're usually in my phone. Vivid images. This is one of my favorite hacks that once I figured out, I was like, oh man, this is so helpful i've talked about this before i really like once you have that song concept that and you're starting to brainstorm it i really really like to go to google images and search for images that sort of evoke the emotion that i'm going for i like to find at least three images usually sometimes two is enough sometimes i get like seven and the idea is now instead of just having an idea in my brain I take an idea in my brain, go find pictures that remind me of that and that really evoke an emotion off of that, and then put that in the document. 
That way I have record of that forever. And it's easy to keep the tone more um, similar, right? If I'm always looking at these pictures that have a certain feeling while I'm writing, you know, the music maybe, while I'm writing the lyrics, and it helps to really keep a uniform tone. And, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So in a sense, I'm, like, taking other people's thousands of words, and then I'm making a song off of it, in a sense, because I have, you know, three, th three or four or five images, so three, four, five thousand words, in a way. Uh, and then a brainstorm space. This is just where I have ideas written down, the main meat of the brainstorm sheet. Although I would argue the most, may, maybe the most important and helpful is are the images. So here's an example that has all three sections. You have the music. Uh, so new song is, is the original file that had the music that I had so far for this. Uh, because I didn't know what the song was going to be. But as I started developing the song, because I've started to write lyrics and stuff for this, now I resaved the song as Castaway, but new song is also still Castaway. Um, so there's actually two files on my computer that have uh, the music for this. So that's what that is. And then the images. So I found these images with Google, as always. And I little pro tip here too. I also like to then right click the image and add a link to where I found them. That way when the song comes out, I could like send a thank you to the artist or to wherever it came from and be like, "Hey, just so you know, like you helped me write this song and you know, here it is. I hope you like it, but you know, just want to let you know. Thank you for like such a great drawing or whatever." Um, but the idea is all of these three images convey sort of the emotions that I want this song to convey. Um, and they're all images that somewhat move me, right? There's a guy on the right is clearly in despair, seeming like he's alone on a beach. Uh, the one top left, somebody sailing away using with a with a heart as a balloon that's clearly damaged, right? It's it's being patched up, and you see those waves, right? He's not he's not getting anywhere. And then uh, I just really like the vibe of that that last one as well. So I threw that in there. So that's sort of the image section. Now, I like, I overwhelmingly use paintings. But you can use whatever inspires you best. For me, for whatever reason, photography doesn't inspire me quite as much as art does. Um, not that photography is an art, but you know what I mean, like a, a painting. There's something about a painting or a drawing that just inspires me a little bit more than photography. I think because of the room for creativity there is um, with those, you know, paintings or drawings over uh, photography. But, of course, you do whatever inspires you. That's the goal, right? Maybe images won't even work for you. Then fine, throw this out. Uh, but the point remains. And then, so if you look at the bottom... That last section, there's just a bunch of ideas, right? And most of them are garbage because that's not the point, right? So I just, about watching as ships pass by, wanting to be seen as worth rescuing. Like that's, I'm not even trying to write a lyric there, right? Like that's clearly just an idea. Like nobody's, nobody's writing that as a lyric, right? And I'm not even trying. Rejected but crying out for someone to see them as beautiful, right? So that's sort of... Similar to the first one, but a little different. And then we have stuff like, I'm not a monster. Uh, but then also, I'm not worth anyone's time or effort, right? So not all these ideas even go together. That's not the point. Because again, you're surveying the park. You're looking over there at the pond. You're looking over there at the fountain, over there at the bridge, and over there at the forest. Those are all very different things. They're all in the area, though. And we're just trying to discover where this song is going. Right, because we—I I don't really know yet where this song is going. Is this going, you know, this castaway? How do they feel about the world? Do they want to, you know, want? Uh, so back to the first one, wanting to be seen as worth rescuing. Is that the tone that we're going to take, or is it going to be the tone of, you know, may, maybe they'll be resentful or maybe sort of defeated? Right, world doesn't need or want me. Sort of in the middle there. Um, so. 
the point here is to sort of discover where you're going with this idea. You have an idea, let's try to figure out where we're going with it. And here are some other examples of it. Uh, the one to the left is for something who's, that's working title is uh, uh, won't be alone, I believe, or she won't be. No, I think it's just won't be alone. Um, so at the top, I just sort of have a musical idea of like lonely sounding, right? Like that's that's the overwhelming emotion of this song. And I have some some little points there. And then I sort of have an idea at the end of that top section, right? We talk about her friends coming, so now she won't be alone. But big reveal, so I have big reveal in quotes there. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard my podcast or read my blog post on the lyrical concept of a big reveal, right? That's that idea of like the big twist at the end, sort of. Like, you know, for example, in in this case, look at the picture on the right. This one right here. So she sort of has made her own little snowmen friends, right? So a big reveal, right? If we have a whole song where she's talking about her friends or whatever, but you find out at the end that it's a little girl who's built her own friends out of snowmen, like all of a sudden the tone of the whole song shifts, right? That's a big reveal that makes a world of difference, right? Went from a girl who happily has a lot of friends and this and that, and then, you know, the amount of of meaning change that can happen with the reveal that, oh, this whole time you thought that they were people, real friends, but they're actually little snowmen that she built for herself when she's alone at night, you know, next to a dead tree, right? So, and obviously the dead tree is probably not going to make the song or whatever, but the idea is the same, right? It's, it's this, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of talking through like a idea to execute in the song. Like, okay, how about like you have these friends and then the big reveal is, oh, just kidding, they're snowmen. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, man. And then down here, the reason I included this is very different. This is sort of me just typing off the top of my head the emotions that I imagine that little girl on the right is feeling. Because uh, of these two pictures, the one on the right just inspires the crud out of me. Like, I just, man, I love that picture. Um, the one on the left is nice too, but it just doesn't quite convey the emotion uh, that I'm going for as much. There's something about a little girl building her own snowman friends with the dead tree. I don't know. It just moves me. Um, so, you know, another starry night. I can see the stars, but they're so far. There are so many that seem so close, and yet they're so far. Every lonely person wonders why they're the only one who's lonely. Everyone seems so close when you're looking from afar. Stars burn so hot, but they're too far to heat up the night. Right? Like... This is just me typing stream of consciousness, right? Like I even repeat myself just within a slightly different way in case it inspires me later, right? There's so many that seem so close and yet they're so far. Every lonely person wonders why they're the only one who's lonely. I can see the stars, but they're so far. Like those are all kind of the same thing repeated, but I'm just working through the emotions there. And this is just, you know, free text. Whoops. Uh, and then this other one, I have this... Uh, song idea for like the loon and I took a little time to figure out what interval a loon call is so you know there's you know uh, you probably know a loon call what it sounds like right it's one of the more iconic bird noises if not the most and it's got this lonely mournful sound and it's beautiful loons are awesome but um so I I, I took the time I p played on loop the sound of uh, a, a loon's cry and I figured out, oh, it's, it's about a minor third. So I thought, okay, if the song's called The Loon, how cool would it be to work in a riff, maybe a piano riff right now. It's sort of a piano riff. I don't, I don't know where it's going to go, though. Um, it might end up being guitar or synth or something else. Um, like, it makes sense. It's sort of a natural thing to sort of have that loon minor third is a big part of this song because that's what the song is going to be about all right lyric writing you're like oh it took us this long just to get to writing lyrics yes to be clear if you're inspired with an idea and you're so inspired that you're ready to just start writing lyrics you don't have to go through these steps right so just just to make sure we're on the same page. The goal of these steps 
is to reduce the amount of pressure on every step so that you can at any level of inspiration you can always do something productive towards that's like productive towards your songwriting goals right so if you're not that inspired today you can still sit for an hour and just think of ideas right or if you're not that inspired you can still start a brainstorm sheet or continue a brainstorm sheet you already have right because you're not asking yourself to write great lyrics today you're just asking yourself to come up with ideas right like it's reducing the pressure and it's sort of spreading the pressure out so that you can sort of just naturally be developing all these songs at the same time and there's not a ton of pressure on a specific song and you're not waiting for the muse and that's sort of the goal here so at any point if you're really inspired, you can throw these out the window. This is just for all the other times, right? The 99% of the time where, you, you know, you have 15 minutes. I can't write a song in 15 minutes. Okay, that's fine. Like, you shouldn't sit down with the goal of I'm going to write a song. That's too too big of a goal, right? That's like I'm going to sit down and write a chapter of a book in 15 minutes. Like, uh, are you, though? So, lyric writing. Write until you find unrefined gold. The big word here is unrefined. If you find refined gold, that's weird to say, find refined gold, that's great. That's good. I love it when I write a lyric and that first version is just perfect. It's amazing. It feels really good. But it is. it should be. If you do that often, you are either brilliant beyond brilliant or your lyrics aren't very good. Probably the first time you wrote something that's on the right track. Right? Like, it's so oh, it's fine. We can do something with this. So your goal with lyric writing is to keep writing until you find unrefined gold. It's where you have, like, ideas or a little storyline or a concept that's that's pretty strong. And you, you have, like, a verse lyric that you're like, okay, I can take this and make it really good. It's not already gold. It's not already really good. But it's, it's, it's there. It's telling the story that the first verse needs to tell. It has some of the, the ideas that I really want the first verse to have. That's what we're looking for here. Power tip. Don't write a first draft. Why do I say this? Because a first draft... If I, if I told you, okay, you need to do a five-page paper for history class. What does your first draft look like? What does it look like? Probably, it looks like five pages, right? You're writing, your goal with writing your first draft for that paper is to write about the length of your final product, so five pages, and then you'll refine the words and the sentences to be pretty good. Good enough. You want to get at least a B. Maybe you're like me, and you're like, no, must have an A, and you do that. That's fine. Whatever your thing is, no matter who you are, you probably didn't write 30 pages for your five-page paper. But you do want to write maybe not 30 pages, but a lot more pages, a lot more lyrics than you end up with. Write a lot. I have 15, I think, I think... I made this slide deck a couple weeks ago. I think we're up to 17 or 18 pages for a recent song that I'm working on. Um, it's been a giant thorn in my side, so that is towards the most I have. It usually ends up being more like five, six pages uh, to end up having one page in the final song. Uh, but this one has just, I just, it's been a struggle. It's delayed an EP for a long time. It's very annoying. Um, so I'm really trying to work through it by just writing page after page after page. And I think I'm getting closer. But the idea is, look, that, that final song, it's going to be a little longer, I think. So that final song will end up being like two pages worth of lyrics. But still, I'm now, if if I do have 18 pages, like I think I remember, 18 divided by 2 I literally have nine times more lyrical content right now than I'm going to end up with. So write a lot because you're trying to find that unrefined gold. You're not just writing like a verse, a chorus, another verse, a bridge, and then being like, well, I'm going to take these garbage verses and chorus and bridge and turn them into gold. Like, well, is it unrefined gold? Because you can't take silver and turn it into gold, right? And you can't take 
uh, unrefined copper and turn it into gold, right? So, lyric writing. Probably the most straightforward part of this process because um, on average, I think that's the the one step people try to do and they kind of just do lyric writing and then they wonder, well, why is this lyric garbage or why is this lyric kind of like, eh, it's uh, okay. Um, and I think the lack of these other steps is why, especially step five, my all-time favorite and probably the most... I don't know, life-changing for me personally. Step four, lyric arranging. The goal is to start to organize the parts that have potential. So let's take that 15-page example, right? Or 18, whatever it is now. We'll go with 15 because I like that number. So, well, actually, 18. Peyton Manning. We'll go with 18. All right. <laughs> um, so say you have 18 pages, right? At some point... Throughout those 18 pages, I'm going to have a first verse that I think, oh, this this has potential. I like this. That might be on page 17. I might have a chorus that I really liked on page 3. So this is literally just taking all those best parts and putting them in, in the same area because we're preparing for the next step. Right? So we, we have unrefined gold. And I don't want my unrefined gold in pay, on page 3, and then a little bit on page 15, and a little pay, bit on page 17, a little bit on page 1. No, I want them all together in order, right? I want this to be perspective first verse, perspective first chorus, perspective um, second verse, right? And I want them all in order so that then I can work on really refining those lyrics. Power tip, don't throw away any lyrics, I say arranging for a reason. You're arranging things. You're not deleting the stuff that you decided was crap. Okay? You're arranging things. Here's a real life analogy. You're reorganizing your room. When you reorganize your room, you move your bed around, you move your desk into the right the corner where you have a little bit more room, right? Maybe you had it maybe had it diagonal to a corner, you decided that takes up a stupid amount of room considering my room is not that big. So you sort of change that and that gives you a little more room. And, you know, maybe you have some some toys from when you were younger or I don't know, I don't know how old you are. Maybe you have something in your room that you no longer really care about, but you also feel like, well, I may use this. So you shove it in your closet, right? Because you don't want to look at it every day. It's sort of cluttering your room, but you don't want to throw it out either uh, because it might be useful later, right? Because maybe you haven't used your camera in six months, but you know you're going to use it eventually, right? So you're not throwing it away. You're just you're just saying, mm, maybe that camera I use once every six months shouldn't be sitting on my dresser. Maybe that should go in a little cubby in my closet, right? So that's sort of the idea here. You're not throwing stuff away. Because you might have something good. You might have some gold in there that just isn't right for this song. Um, so so just don't throw away any lyrics. And, and then on a practical level, like throwing away lyrics doesn't help anything, right? It's not like your, your brain clears itself a little bit by hitting the delete key on lyrics, right? Like just put the lyrics that you're going to continue to develop on a page by themselves or a couple pages by themselves and then... If you need four empty pages between the lyrics that you're going to develop more and the throwaway lyrics, fine. But don't throw them away. My favorite that I talk about so much and that I'm convinced is by far the most... I'm hesitant to say life-changing, but songwriting, process-changing, best way to get great lyrics... Because you just never write brilliant words the first time, or very rarely, and and you barely you you don't really ever do it by like a whole sentence either. It's 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 got to be little bits at a time. Thank you, software development, for uh, teaching me all about iteration and making this making 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 headway into my songwriting as well, and really really helping it. So, the goal of this. Refine your lyrics into pure gold, right? We already have unrefined gold, so now you're trying to refine it into pure gold. One small step at a time. 
another big songwriting idea is you got to be happy with small steps because most steps are going to be small. And you know what? Every small step makes a big difference in the long run as long as you keep making small steps, right? One small step every day is going to do much, much better with some big leaps, right? So, so, you know, let's say on average every day or five days a week or three days a week, whatever, you make small steps. And then like once a month you have a giant leap. That is going to add up. If we say five small steps equals one giant leap, that's going to add up over time to being much better than just one giant leap per month and no small steps, right? So the goal we want to get into is small steps, small steps, small steps. Also because I've talked about this before, a lot, so a lot of times large leaps come from being inspired, right? And to some level, we can't control being inspired. But something we can do is put ourselves in the right position to be inspired, right? So... That's big picture thing here. Be happy with one small step at a time because small steps eventually add up a lot. Real life analogies. Specifically one. This is different than the one in the free guide. To give you another one. Fixing up a basement. I'm currently in my basement. Basement studio area. When I moved into this house, it was painted Buckeye Red as in Ohio State Buckeye Red, because I live in Columbus, Ohio. And people here are next level obsessed with the Buckeyes. It's a weird cultural thing. I mean, it's just next level obsessed. It's to the point that people don't even li- who don't even like football are obsessed with watching all the games, which blows my mind, because I-, I love football. Um, and the thought of... of watching a sport religiously that I don't like is just blows my mind. Like I only basically watch football because I think most of the other sport like baseball, I think it's boring. I would never want to watch even 16 baseball games a year. Please. No, please, please. No, no offense. If you like baseball, just not for me. So anyway, the basement had no floor, but it did have walls and they were painted red. And they had some kitchen cabinets down there that were a gross old wood. So what do we do? We fixed up the basement in a day. Nope. Nope. First thing we did, we picked a color. Right? Took us a couple days probably to pick a color. Really, it ended up being two colors. We have this light gray off wall and then a bunch of blue, darker blue walls that's very similar to the songwriter theory blue. Um... Which, by the way, little uh, <laughs> little insight, the songwriter theory colors are pulled off of my Denver Broncos. So it's Bronco blue and uh, Bronco orange. I, I believe I literally took a, a tool and, and, and took the actual colors right from their logo. I might have adjusted a little a little bit, but anyway. So it's similar blue. And then, over the course of a week we did one coat of paint a day, right? And maybe we didn't even finish the whole basement because it's pretty big. It's like 500 square feet or something big. Um, So, you know, we do a little bit at a time. So then, after, say, a week, now the basement's painted and it doesn't look awful because while I like Buckeye Red, it is a horrible wall color. It is atrocious. It is disgusting. Um, Just the worst. Or at least in this basement, it was the worst. I've I've seen it work a little better in other places. I think it works in a garage. But anyway, so now it's a better color. Then, eventually, we figured out a floor. So we put the floor in. That took a weekend with me and some friends. Then we figured out what trim to put. And I painted the trim. And then, after the trim was painted and left to dry for two days or so, I eventually started nailing the trim in. And to be honest, I still haven't fully finished this basement because it's like finished enough that I I don't feel crazy anymore and it's useful. Um, And I'm spending time on songwriter theory and Mount Rushmore of everything and stuff. So um, it's sort of fallen off the wagon a little bit. It still needs to be finished, finished. But the idea is 
You have to be happy with one step at a time, right? One small step at a time. Because, you know, one day of just painting one of the four walls, a single coat is moving in the direction of having a fixed up basement. You don't have to leap every day. You can just take a small step and eventually you'll get there. Practicing an instrument is another one, right? You don't get great overnight. You don't, if you, if you are learning a song, right? A lot of times, let's say you're a classical guitarist or pianist or whatever, you'll learn just one section of the song, right? Or oftentimes, piano, when you're younger, you'll just start with the right hand, right? And then you'll add the left hand later, right? You're doing little bits at a time. Your piano teacher probably, or guitar teacher probably didn't, well, guitar doesn't apply as much because the intervals are the same. You just move up a fret. But um, for piano, if you, your teacher probably didn't throw all the scales at you at once. They're like, okay, you're going to have the C major scale, and you're going to have the D major scale and the G major scale. And then the next week, they might add a, a, one more scale or two more scales, right? It's a little bit at a time. So we're going to dive into a little example. This was the first version I had for a bridge to a song. It is not great, right? Like this is not great. I knew that it was on the right track. It's sort of going for what I was going for a bit. And I thought, okay, this is good enough. I see some gold in here for what I need this section to do. So let's iterate through this and get it to be much better. First change. That first line was garbage. Days burn away as your flame grows strong. Like for, for a little bit of background, this is a song I have called Flightless. Background of the story is basically old man uh, sees a bird, winter's coming, and the bird has broken its wing. The old man takes care of the bird until it's healed. This bridge is meant to be that transition point of like letting the listener know that time has now passed and the bird has healed so that we can get to the epic finale is sort of the job of this section. There's more to the song than the overly simplistic thing I just said, but that's enough information for this to mean something to you. So, days burn away as your flame grows strong. Gross. Just gross. Simplistic garbage that just... I mean, like I, I don't even like showing you that I even wrote that as a first draft. Right? Like, it, it, it gets the idea, but gross. But ashes fall from wasted time as days burn away. Okay. It's much better, for sure, right? Days burn away as your flame grows strong. That just that just sounds like a corny, I don't know, just a corny teenage song or something. Ages fall from, or ashes fall from wasted time as days burn away. So that's, that's that gives a much better, more vibrant image right days are burning and ashes are falling from it and wasted time right so that that gives you a lot more to dig your teeth into still not perfect but it's better it's an upgrade right so okay so that's our lyric now time is the ally of the broken becoming healed what even gross get out of here but erosion eats away at the old and the young Okay, I like the idea, right? So I'm on the top part for this. I like the idea, but it doesn't really, it's, first of all, it is not a great lyric, even though the idea is fine. And then it doesn't really set up for the for what's happening after this in the song. So what's happening after this in the song is sort of that, that announcement of, of like, you know, your wings are healed and like like fly away. Basically him saying, hey, I've lived my life. I've had a good life. I just want you to fly away and have a good life. Like, you, winter's coming. You need to go. Um, so, erosion eats away at the old and the young. That doesn't move us closer to that conclusion, right? That That's kind of going in a darker direction. But this sort of ends in, in a bittersweet way, right? The old man is still sort of dying in a nursing home or whatever, and it's implied he has Alzheimer's, so he's wasting away. But the bird is, like, that's supposed to be an encouraging thing. So it's just somebody saying, hey, go fly away, have a great life. 
you're young, go do your thing. Erosion eats away at the old and the young is not, that's, that's, that's like saying some, a downer, right? Saying a downer to the bird before it leaves. That's not what we want here. So the end is always closer than we'd ever choose to see. I really like that, actually. Much better than time is the ally of the broken becoming healed, right? It's, it's, so I, we're developing it a little bit more into some of the themes and some of the things that I want this song to say. So, um, that's something I always talk about that, like, or I don't talk about, you wouldn't know this, but, um, I always talk about this idea that I feel like everybody knows conceptually that they're going to die, but nobody really believes it. And I say that because if you're wasting your life away doing things that you think don't matter and you're playing a ton of video games and you're just doing like all this stuff that like doesn't even matter. And if you were honest with yourself, you're like 35 years old and you look back and you're like, I, I have not accomplished or I have not like done anything worthwhile in the last 15 years, right? Like since I graduated college, if you went to college, I've done basically nothing. Like if I, if I just skipped from 20 to 35, it really wouldn't make much of a difference except for maybe some weight I put on or weight I lost or, you know what I mean? Like, and so I'm convinced that most people would live their lives very, very differently if they actually knew in their heart of hearts that they were going to die. So I know getting a little deeper and darker, but that's sort of the idea behind this. The end is always closer than we'd ever choose to see, right? Like, we live like we have hundreds of years left, even people who are like 60 or 70 years old, right? Realistically, they're looking at 10, 20, maybe if they're lucky, 30 more years, but yet we still, people just tend to live like it's going to be forever, right? They still go to sleep mad at night. They still um, waste time on, not that you can't waste time on things that you truly enjoy, right? I'm not saying be productive with your every moment. That's not what I'm saying, but like, you know, you might make different choices, like spend more time with your wife and kids or your husband and kids or significant other instead of playing more video games or sorry for picking on video games. It's just I have a lot of guy friends and that, that's sort of the, the tendency that I see um, or, you know, maybe reading too many books. Right. So anyway, soapbox, we got to get 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 through this lyric editing because there's still more to go. Uh, so fly away and mo make the most of what's left of this gift. So at that point, I've now moved, like, so erosion eats away at the old and the young is sort of just reiterating a thing that we know and and is sort of similar, echoing the, like, this idea of, like, everybody's going to die someday, but the end is always closer than we'd ever choose to see already conveys that, right? So we don't need that erosion eats away at the old and the young. Yeah, we all know, right? Like, so in, in my mind, the end is always closer than we'd ever choose to see. It's much more eloquent. Uh, it's simple, but in my mind, at least, a little bit profound, right? Like, yeah, I, like we always think death is farther than it really is. Um, so fly away and make the most of what's left of this gift. That's not very lyrical, right? Like, there's nothing pretty about that. That's clearly not <laughs> how this lyric is going to end up, right? It's not that great but it's at least moving us towards what I want to say with that line. And it's this idea of the first time the old man's like, fly away, right? Your wings are healed, fly away. Make the most of what's left of this gift because this old man wishes he had that gift still, but he does not. All right. So now we're actually going on a word level, right? Because I talk about in the guide, I talk about sort of a section level right? Which is this whole thing we're doing here is section level, right? This is just the second bridge of this song. Yes, there's two bridges. There's also like three choruses and a finale. This is one of the biggest lyrical endeavors I've ever done. It's like two pages of lyrics, two full pages, two or three, I think. Anyway, but now, so this whole thing is section editing, right? This is line, line iterative lyric editing. And this, now we're doing some word lyric editing and you don't have to do it in order right just the idea is you're passing through you figure out an upgrade that you can do so it started as ashes fall from wasted time as days burn away wasted is not it's just it's a meh word like it's it's fine it's true right ashes fall from wasted time as days burn away but 
I didn't think it really was, uh, I don't know. It's just, meh, right? Like, it's fine. Ashes fall from withered time as days burn away. So what I did here is just went to thesaurus.com, put wasted in there, and then I don't remember if withered was actually a considered a synonym with wasted because um, it is very similar, right? But it's, it's a much more... Uh, colorful way of saying it, right? Like, wasted is kind of... It's, like, bad or good or happy, right? Like, those are all very generic words. And really what we want to move away from are those generic words that don't mean much, right? Like, sad. Are you, like, bitter sad? Or are you, uh, you know... We've talked about this before, right? You just want to have more um, powerful words, Right? As a songwriter, you only have so many words to work with. You want to make sure every word packs a punch. So ashes fall from withered time as days burn away. Just has that image that I want. Wasted time wasn't quite, quite right. Withered time is. And the image in my mind from this is the idea of uh, the biblical concept of the, the chaff being burned away. Which chaff is like the remnants of wheat, I believe. So it's like a plant substance. So the idea I see here is like a withered plant representing time. It's withered, right? It's dying. And then days are burning away and ashes are falling from withered time as days burn away. So that's just that just conveys that that like plants burning up and flying away and a and the ashes of them sort of falling image that I want. So in my mind, that line with that one word change just got a ton better. All right. So now the clear weak point, in my opinion, is that last line, which is why we're reworking that last line. So fly away and make the most of what's left of this gift. First of all, that didn't fit with the music I already had at all. So now we're trying to sort of fit it to the music that we already have and the melody I already have. So now we have your wings are back, your strength remains, so fly away from me. So the idea of this is this final line needs to make clear at this point the bird's wings are healed and the old man wants him to fly away and, you know, live a good life. Um, which sounds kind of corny. I hate the live a good life, but I don't want to over explain everything because it's kind of beyond the point. Um, so again, not very lyrical. This line is pretty meh, but it's it's moving in closer to the, the, the right direction. Especially the fly away for me, right? It's this idea of it's actually a kind thing to me for you to fly away. I know you want to stay, but it's kind to me to fly away, not because I don't want you anymore so much as I don't want to hold you back. I truly will be happy if you fly away for me. Right, so that's like a subtle thing, but as a songwriter, right, you got to get into these little subtleties that make a big, big difference. So fly away from me doesn't tell you much, right? Fly away from me says nothing of your attitude towards the thing flying away. You might be bitterly saying, fly away from me. Go ahead and leave, right? Or you might be saying... You know, why are you flying away from me? Right, like the, the attitude is not clear. Fly away for me. Now it's making it clear. This is truly what I want. So it's 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 um, a big difference, even though it's a single word in that case. All right. So that's still the line that needs work because at this point, ashes fall from withered time as days burn away. I love that. Clock ticks and memories are all that's left behind. I really like that. That lyric, I think we haven't changed at all. First time's the charm for that one, I guess. The end is always closer than we'd ever choose to see. I really like that, too. It's a nice blend of, of simple but sort of profound if you actually think about it and dwell on it. But it's not like trying too hard with like fancy big words, which I'm not a big fan of fancy big words. I'm, I, I really like words like ashes and withered and, and things like that that are not big words per se. They're just very um, vibrant words. They have an image that goes with them, uh, a very powerful image, right, because back to the like withered versus wasted wasted doesn't have a very powerful image withered does 
if I tell you like a wasted thing, like that doesn't that probably doesn't convey a a very vibrant image for you. Whereas withered does. You're probably imagining like a wilted flower, or, or withered withered person, right? Skin, right? The sort of withering away. Um. So upgrade on your wings are back. Your strength remains. Is your strength is back? You have your wings. So. This is partially because really dumb to say your strength remains because the bird didn't have his strength, which is why it didn't fly away in the first place, right? Like the whole premise of this song is a bird with a broken wing that the old man healed back to health so that he could fly away and join his friends going south for the winter and survive, right? That's sort of the whole, that's not really the meaning of the song. The meaning is a much deeper, more elaborate sort of thing that I'm going for, but the basic story is that. Um, so your strength is back. You have your wings. So fly away from me. So now, first of all, we we change we change the order, right? Before I started with wings and then went to strength. This time I started with strength and then go to wings. A part of that is just it flowed better with the melody. Is is really the the it just it just flows better in my mind. Flow better with melody. I like that better. Um, and then as far as like is back right your wings are back like the bird never lost its wings right like that's another sort of silly thing for me to have said um which again this is a little bit at time right so i wasn't trying to make it brilliant i just was moving it in the right direction uh and it did it did its job for that but, but now we're finding a little bit more so your strength is back right your strength doesn't remain you weren't able to fly south for the winter it's back you have your wings um, so it's this idea, yes, the bird always has wings, but you have your wings is sort of a subtle call to like, you have your wings. I don't, which is why I'm telling you to go fly away from me, even though I'm not going to be able to fly away. I'm, I'm never escaping this place because it's implied with the first line of the song that the old man is either in a hospital or some sort of nursing home type situation because the first line is hello nurse. All right. Your strength is back, you have your wings, so fly away from me. Still isn't there, right? It's it's getting there, it's closer, but it's just not there. Your wings are healed, you're free again, so fly away from me. So, nobody cares about the bird's strength, right? Like, that's not, that's not something that ever came up in the song, Strength isn't the point. The point is the bird being able to fly away. It's this idea of, you know, a, an old man who can't fly away. He's he's has Alzheimer's. He, you know, it, there's there's never going back to being okay again in a sense, right? Like, it's all downhill for him until death, on a certain level, right? Like he knows this is where he's gonna die, whether it's the hospital or whatever sort of in a dark place, but he wanted to do this good deed so that something else who did have a chance to be strong again or to fly again, right? So fly, flying away, fly, fly, flying is a big theme in this uh, EP that this is going to be a part of. So your wings are healed. So you have your wings is boring, right? Like have in general is a, a boring word. If you have the word have in your song, Maybe think about a, a better way to word that. Your wings are healed is more vibrant than you have your wings. Like, well, the, again, if we're going to go into technicalities, the bird already had its wings, right? Like, we're talking about your wings are healed, right? You always had your wings. Um, and you're free again. So you're free again. So again, we've reversed the order again based on sort of the syllables that we're working with and what flowed better with the melody um, and what flowed better in my mind out loud like when the words are said or sung out loud. So we've basically ripped out the your strength is back, because again, who cares? Like that's not, that's besides the point. And we only have so many words to work with, so we want every word to count. You're free again. This whole thing, the flying away, being flightless, it's all about that idea of freedom. So you're free again is a much, 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 uh, better way to word that. So, from beginning to end, let's see how far we've come. As you can see, the only thing that has not changed 
is the clock ticks and memories are all that's left behind. Um, and this is probably going to be the final version. I'm not entirely sure. I still might tweak some things, but we started with this. Days burn away as your flame grows strong. Clock ticks and memories are all that's left behind. Time is the ally of the broken becoming healed, but erosion eats away at the old and the young. That is a mess. It's gross. But it had potential in the direction that I wanted to go. We ended up with ashes fall from withered time as days burn away. Clock ticks and memories are all that's left behind. The end is always closer than we'd ever choose to see. Your wings are healed. You're free again. So fly away from me. We also have that rhyme there, right? So, um, world of difference. I think we can all agree. No matter how you feel about either of those lyrics, you have to think example B there is worlds better than example A. And it's all with these little steps, right? Like each time I only made it marginally better. And over the course of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six steps. We went from gross to, all right, it's pretty good. We're ready. This is something I wouldn't mind recording, right? Final step. And keep in mind, this is something to do over all the sections, right? I just showed you one section for the sake of time. In the guide, if you download that or if you have downloaded that, there is another example actually from this song um, that has even more steps, if I remember correctly, and has even more profound of a difference between uh, the first version and the last version, uh, in my opinion. And I give a detailed breakdown of exactly why I made every change. Step six is the final step, lyric polishing. The goal of this is to make words flow and fit the music better. So the idea here is sometimes you have a lyric that works and is really good, but then maybe you write the melody after. Or maybe you sort of did some weird things with how uh, the syllables lined up in the melody. So you need to tweak words just a little bit to fit the music better. Because at the end of the day, as good of a lyric as it is, if it doesn't fit well with the, the music, like th that's the end goal, right? We're, at the end of the day, we're not writing poetry. We're writing a song. Now, yes, I think the lyrics of your song should be good enough to qualify as poetry. And... When I say that, it's just this idea that I think implicitly in our mind, or at least in a lot of people's minds, there's this idea that like lyrics are the the bar for lyrics is lower, right? Because we listen, you know, you might listen to pop music where the lyrics are largely anywhere from like eh, to downright garbage, right? But yet the song's still popular and every. But like for poems, we sort of think. The lyrics, the or the lyrics, the the words are what matter, right? Because that's all there is to a poem. Whereas for songs, we make excuses, right? The guitar is sweet, though. The melody's cool, but did you hear the arrangement? Their vocals are so good, right? So we see lyrics as less important because it's one part of several parts. So if everything else is really good, or something is elite, right? An elite vocalist singing a song that's kind of stupid, like you're still mar you're mar you're marveling at the performance so much you might not even notice so there's this idea of like poetry is a higher standard my challenge to you is to um i've talked i've talked before about what i have lots of tests that i sort of put my music and lyrics through to like see if they're of the quality i want them to be and one of them is my my test of is it worth being framed and it's basically this. If your lyric isn't so good that it stands on its own merit as a poem that you could like put on the wall, right? Like a Robert Frost poem you would put on the wall, right? And somebody would read it and be like, wow, okay. And I'm not saying you need to be Robert Frost, right? But the idea is the lyric should be so good that it's worth reading on a wall without the context of like, well, this is the melody and this is that. Like it doesn't need to hide behind the music for it to be acceptable on its own it is really good anyway but that being said we do need to fit it to the music right or fit the music to this and sometimes that involves sort of um 
adjusting little things, right? You shouldn't be making big differences, right? And we don't want to compromise how good the lyric is, but but we might shift some word order around or or or, or you know remove something like I told you to go and maybe we make it I told you go, right? Like it means the same thing, but one has one less syllable and it has that comma in there, right? Like I told you go, I told you to go. Or maybe you had I told you go, but actually what fits with the melody better is I told you to go, right? Like little things like that. And for the record, I just said that off the top of my head. That obviously is not the strongest lyric, probably. It depends on context. But anyway, polishing is not an active process. Okay, so this is the only process here that's really not active. And I say that because you're not actively looking for places to polish, per se, because that's really taken care of in the uh, iterative lyric editing, right? That's where you're actively going through tweaking by word, by line, to make it better and better. Polishing is sort of, you know, you're singing it with the melody and something just doesn't feel quite right, so now you, like, may try an adjustment and okay, right? So you're not actively trying to polish. This is just something, um, the way I put it here, polishing is a willingness to adapt lyrics you largely consider done. Right, you're not going out of your way to polish them per se, because again, that's taken care of or should be taken care of in the iterative lyric editing. This is more of like a, I thought the lyric was done, but I noticed this one line doesn't fit with the melody very well, so I'm gonna adjust this little bit here to make it really flow much better. So that is. The six steps. Those are the six steps. There we go. Those are the six steps that I always fo uh, follow for lyric writing for the most part, except for those weird random times where, like, yeah, you blow through a song really quickly and it's awesome. Um, but in general, my lyrics generally follow this flow. Now, that's not to say when music comes in, right? That's a whole nother discussion, right? Sometimes I have all the music written before we even start step one of a song. Sometimes I have we go through step six of lyrics before I write any music, right? Sometimes music comes in at step three of this lyric of this lyric process sometimes some of the lyric the music comes in at step two and some of it comes in at step six right the, so obviously we didn't really discuss because it's there's just so many variations where music fits into this but overall your lyric writing process should look something like this and a big part of the idea here is you're not putting too much pressure on any step you notice that right so before you might have written lyrics with like all this pressure on like a blank page and you're gonna write a song and it's gonna be good right the problem is you're asking yourself to go from you don't even have an idea of what your book is about to writing a perfect book on the first try right it's the same idea it's a ridiculous thing to expect so we're really spreading out the responsibility throughout these steps making it so that each one is low pressure and that each one builds towards writing a lot of songs that you can be really, really, really proud of, right? You might have 100 ideas, 10 of which you develop, start to develop into songs. Five of them become actual songs in the next year. The other five maybe, you know, will be for next year. And then w whatever it is, right? Like each step gets progressively a little more intensive, but each step is just a small step, right? So in a sense, you can take that iterative lyric editing, and that's sort of, part of why I love that is I think it it fleshes out best the idea of songwriting in general, and then all of these steps. It's this idea of being comfortable and and willing to do small steps, because these small steps will add up to make a huge, huge, huge difference. So be willing to take these small steps be excited about these small steps i also like that 
you know, some days you'll be thinking of a million ideas, but you won't be in a very lyrical mood, right? Because in, in a sense, sometimes ideas are very practical, right? Like the rise, the rise thing, right? That's just like a musical idea that I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So that's more of a science brain type of thing. Whereas actually writing beautiful lyrics or tweaking lyrics to be a little more beautiful and a little more um, uh, precise, that's sort of a different mood that that takes, right? Or maybe taking images, trying to figure out what images you want, right? For that step two, that brainstorm document. Again, like all of these are like little things. And the beauty is that maybe you're not at all inspired or creative today. Even when you're not at all inspired or creative, you can go find pictures that go with a concept and that might actually inspire you, right? It might jumpstart you into inspiration. So the idea is any day, any time, you can jump into any of these steps and you have something to work on and no matter how inspired or not inspired you are there's one of these steps that you can do for one of your songs and hopefully you end up being at a point like where i am where you have like 200 ideas at any given time you're developing brainstorm documenting if you will you know 20 of them you're working on lyrics for five or six or seven of them and you know, on all of them, you're in different stages, right? One, you're just writing a bunch of lyrics. One, you're starting to get into the iterative lyric editing. And then one of them, you, you're basically done with, and you're just sort of polishing the lyrics as you realize certain rough spots. So, again, if you are joining us sometime in the future and you are not watching live, be sure, if you want more of what we're talking about here, if you want a guide that you can keep forever as a pdf bring it up uh also has an actual literal checklist that you can print out the first page is a literal checklist for you to go through so you remember these steps until it becomes a habit the end goal of course is to not really need the checklist because it's so inherent in what you do in your songwriting process but should be super helpful to you totally free link in the description I had Q&A. So if you have any questions, now is the time. Um, so I'll give like five minutes for Q&A. We'll see if uh, anybody has any questions. Those of you who are, who are left after this long hour and however long it is, um, but until then, if there are any, I will go back and just refresh you on these steps. Number one, capture the concept. Again, the thing I like to do is to have a single document where I have, again, I use Google Drive, just all these song concepts, little lyrical ideas that I like you know, music ideas, just just anything, right? Don't be judgmental at all at what you put here. I don't care if you just put the word the and stop typing. Just write down your ideas. Actively write down your ideas, right? Don't just do this when you're inspired. Don't just, you know, wait for the moment of inspiration and then throw it in the idea doc. Do do that, but don't wait. Spend some time sitting down, just generating ideas, thinking through ideas. And there's lots of ways to do that, right? You can even just search for random art, right? You could type sad paintings. Look for art and then let those inspire you. So you could even, you know, I usually have images in the brainstorm document. You could even put that in your ideas document, right? Like your idea can be a picture. Step two, brainstorm sheet. Develop your idea before you start writing lyrics. This is when you're really, uh, I'll use that analogy again, you found your place in the park. Now you're looking around. You're looking at the pond. You're looking at the bridge. You're looking at the forest. You're sort of getting your bearings. Step three, lyric writing. This is where you're actually exploring, right? You walk to the forest. 
you walk over the bridge, you sort of, you know, meander around the geese because they're evil and you want nothing to do with them, and you're wandering, right? You haven't really found where you're going to take the picture or where, where you're going to end up sitting and having your picnic. You haven't really found the right place, but you're sort of looking, you're searching, you're trying different areas. Arranging. This is where you're starting to get the idea of like, okay, this is the nice picnic area I want to be at, but I don't know what table I'm going to sit at. And iterative lyric editing, that's sort of when you're like, okay, I found my park bench, I found my picnic table, but now I got to put the tablecloth on it. I have to set out the forks and knives. I have to get the the hot dogs grilling, right? We got to actually make this into a picnic. And then finally, lyric polishing. Sitting down and eating. Maybe you think, "Ooh, that burger actually wasn't cooked enough so you just kind of throw it back on for another 30 seconds just so it gets a little less red and a little more pink so I hope this was helpful to you I appreciate you for listening you for watching and uh, for those of you joining live I appreciate the that uh, you joined live because it would have been pretty awkward if I was talking to no one drop a comment down below what step you found most helpful or what step you found most uh was something that you most would never have thought of um or if you've used this concept before if you maybe downloaded this free guide weeks ago or whatever let me know which one has been most helpful to you so far i would love to hear from you and I, if you are a podcast listener or a YouTube subscriber, which by the way, if you found this helpful, be sure to drop a like, be sure to subscribe because I do a video podcast every single week, it comes out on Monday, and I do plan on doing videos uh, that are not podcast videos as well, like actually more edited videos that are meant to be YouTube videos first and foremost. I want to try a bunch of different things. I'd like to get into sort of like uh, a state where people ask questions and I have like a question of the week that I answer that actually comes from you. Different stuff like that I'd like to try. If you have an idea of what would be helpful for you, for me to do on this channel, also put that in the comments below. Um, but yeah, if you want more content like this and learning about songwriting, be sure to hit that subscribe and the notification bell so you know when more content comes out. Hello. I don't know how to say your name because it's so far away on my screen. One second. Uh, why so far away? Hello, Arito Crazy? Is that how you say that name? I don't, I don't know how to say that name. But appreciate the comment. I, uh, I enjoy doing the podcast, so I'm glad that you enjoy the podcast and that you've been listening for a while. I hope that it has, is helpful to you um, and that it's not just, not just entertaining. As I hope that I also am relatively entertaining. Um, but... The end goal, of course, is to help you. So I hope that it's been helpful to you. Oh, R2 crazy like R2-D2. Okay, that actually crossed my mind. Love it. Because I am a giant Star Wars nerd. <sighs> Clone Wars, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen Clone Wars, but so good. It's so good. It makes me so happy. So good. I could just talk about Star Wars for the next like three hours now because it's it's so good. Seriously though, PSA, for everybody else who watches this in the future, don't write off Star Wars The Clone Wars or Star Wars Clone Wars, whichever one is the TV show I always forget. Terrible movie is The Clone Wars, but also a great, great TV show. 
don't judge it based on the first season. It was a little corny, kind of like a kid's show. It quickly turns into very much not a kid's show. It gets shockingly dark, actually. At one point, a Jedi is literally tortured to death. Um, so it's not really a kid's show, um, even though you might think so based on the animation. And it gets so good. It's so good. I honestly m- might argue that it's the best thing of Star Wars, which I know is blasphemous. You're supposed to say Episode Five. And then you're supposed to say, like, Rogue One is the best thing Disney's done, which I do agree with that. Um, But anyway, thanks for commenting. Thanks for letting me know that uh, you've been listening to the podcast. I really do enjoy every time uh, somebody reaches out. Uh, You can always email me, joseph at songwritertheory.com. If you have any questions or now that I'm doing YouTube, really starting the YouTube thing, you can always drop a comment. I will be sure to respond to the comment. Again, whether you are live or if you are somebody watching in the future, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the like that hopefully you dropped. (laughs) And I appreciate the subscribe if you did it. Um, And if not, you know what? I just appreciate that you care enough about songwriting to take the time to watch this. Because at the end of the day, the goal here is I hope I, as a songwriter, can only do so much. Right? Even... The best one could ever hope to do is write, I don't know, a hundred songs that help change the world. Even that is probably asking for too much. And my hope is if I can inspire other people, as many people as possible, and teach other as many people as possible so that they can be the best songwriter that they can be, that we can create sort of this network of learning and people who all support each other who write great music so that hopefully we have a little bit less of some of the pop garbage we have right now and a little bit more of some meaningful awesome music and yes you do absolutely need (laughs) to watch the clone wars it's one of those things it's it's like um what's what's another example (sighs) trying to think of another example but, but there's always those things in life, right, where, like, everybody tells you something's good and you you just are like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. Is it, though? And you're just filled with doubt. But then you finally give in and you watch that thing that everybody's been like, hey, man, or hey, girl, or hey, whatever. It's, you know, it's really good. And then you finally dive in and you're like, oh, my gosh, they were right. Why did I wait this long? Clone Wars is one of those things. You got to get through the first season, especially. It's a little rough. Uh, season two gets better, and that's just all uphill from there. And then the final four episodes is just gold. It's just gold. I don't know. There's no other way to say it. <laughs> uh, Star Wars special, yeah, not n- not great, not great. Those two things. Uh, would never be compared though don't you worry i would say even the worst thing that clone wars ever did is probably better than that if it is any comfort to you all right again appreciate your time appreciate everyone for wanting to become a better songwriter and i hope that i at least moved the needle a little bit for you today but at the end of the day you just listening to me doesn't help you got to go out and songwrite those of you who are on the email list know that i always 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 end my emails with keep songwriting i used to put happy songwriting and you may have noticed or wondered why i changed it from happy songwriting to keep songwriting and the reason for that is i thought most of my songs i write i don't write when i'm happy because i tend towards the darker side of things that's more meaningful to me at least personally And I thought, no, the real thing I want people to do is keep songwriting. I don't want you to give up. I want you to be happy getting 1% better every week or every month. Just get a little bit better at a time. You can do it. Be happy with the small progress. Keep songwriting, whether you're happy about it or whether you're not. Songwrite on days you feel like it. Songwrite on days you don't feel like it. Keep songwriting. And I will talk to you, hopefully, on Monday for the next podcast. Thanks all.